Kentucky's boardroom battle is entering the final stretch as shareholders prepare to submit their votes in tomorrow's annual meeting. The pivotal vote will determine if Triumph Partners Nelson Peltz will get a seat on the board. Joining us now to discuss, Ken Leon, Director of Equity Research at CFRA. Ken, it's good to have you on. It seems to me when you see how much the stock has rallied in recent weeks that maybe, maybe it's still a little too close to call in terms of who the winner here is. Uh, Disney's um, board and C-suite or Peltz and Tryon, but investors seem to be winning. Regardless. It's, an interesting, it's an interesting situation here because it's been a heated proxy battle, but it actually was therapeutic for Disney management because it brought a lot of light in terms of their strategy and with over 100 slides advocating their position uh, that they have the right recipe uh, it's been great for investors. I think for Nelson Peltz, uh, he'll get his return on his investment. Uh, but what we're seeing is more confidence that Disney can do the transformation. And for a business segment, entertainment, which includes broadcast and streaming, it's 45 percent of revenue, but only 8 percent of operating income. So that needs to turn around. Uh, we think they can get the job done. They also have a $7.5 billion dollar uh, cost-cutting program. They're looking for $8 billion of free cash flow this year. You know, it seems to me, Morgan, this is going to be a better managed company. And I think Nelson Peltz was part of making that process come true. Okay, Ken. But uh, you got a $139 price target, which implies more than 10% upside from here. And there's still all these outstanding questions. So it, assuming Bob Iger wins here, why isn't this a sell the news event? Disney has formidable assets, and when you think of Disney going forward, it has moats around, it's theme parks, uh, it has a tremendous franchise, uh, which is not legacy, which is sports, with ESPN, with opportunities for growth in gaming and gambling. And in theatrical, uh, the magic, of course, needs to be there on new film releases uh, that will feed into both the parks but also for streaming. Uh, what's interesting here is uh, they have invested heavily on a global technology platform that's going to yield more opportunity in terms of streaming for 2025. Netflix, it took over 10 years. Disney's doing this in three years. When you look at Disney's other competitors, Warner Brothers, Discovery, or Paramount, they just can't do it. So I think Disney's going to be a winner here. Okay. So what matters more, though, then? Is it Disney Plus and it is, is it that path to greater profitability or is it CEO succession plans after the, first, the last uh, go of it with Bob Iger did not go so well with Chapek? Well, two separate issues. I mean, one, of course, are investors are disciplined, so they want to see return on investment, which includes, of course, good performance, free cash flow, buybacks, and dividends that they have now. And on the succession plan, you know, I think Bob Iger, he'll be done in 2026. We'll be hearing more about who are the candidates again in perhaps later this year. I like uh, James Gorman as a board member here. Mm. Uh, he brings a lot of experience and success on the subject of succession.